So um, for the next section, um, talk about a dictionary. Um, this is the Moe dictionary, uh, and it's much easier to show it than to explain it. So um, this is a dictionary that uh, is all Chinese, but as you can see, there's also English, French, and German, and that you can type whatever in it, and there's full text search, and also there's link to, uh, this is everything that's connected to and uh, uh, Taiwanese Holok and Taiwanese Hakka, and you can also hear the Taiwanese Hakka pronunciation, yeah. and so on, <laughs> for, for all the, for everything, no. and so on. And then uh, there's also, uh, with the cross strait dictionary, the link with the mainland uh, Chinese um, vocabulary, and there's also a lot of very interesting experiments that uh, people do with this corpus, such as um, the three-dimensional visualization of uh, word clusters, meaning clusters, of shape clusters, uh, of all sort of very interesting computational linguistic stuff, which I can talk for days, but this is not today's subject. The thing is that it is a interesting uh, playground, so to speak, using open source data, open data, on the nat natural language of pretty much all the languages that is spoken in Taiwan. So it is very popular. Uh, the primary school teachers here uh, take students to their computer lab to teach them Chinese. Uh, using the Maya Dictionary. And because our mission is to include anything and everything that gets spoken in Taiwan, there's also uh, Aborigine, like Amis, and also Tibetan uh, corpus that we also incorporate. Now, the Maya was actually pretty new. Uh, it started uh, on 2013. Uh, it was initiated by my long, very long time friend, uh, Dr. Ping Ye, who uh, worked for the, I think, physics department of NTU and then become one of the first Googler working on the cloud technologies in Taiwan and then moved to the Silicon Valley still working uh, with Google. And when he moved to the Valley, he found that it is very difficult, almost impossible, to teach his children Chinese. This is a very common problem among people who have moved uh, to the Valley. Now, uh, when we started learning Chinese ourselves, we used the revised Ministry of Education Dictionary, which is the canonical, the best dictionary. And it was available uh, as a Gopher site. I don't know whether you still remember Gopher. It was my first visit uh, to, to the Moe Dictionary. And now the, the Gopher site, of course, nobody uses Gopher anymore, and so in 96, they switched to the World Web, a very new technology at that time, and then uh, it stopped maintaining. So, so it was just the web as it was in 96. It was a very ancient kind of website written with shell script and C uh, executables. So the Ye Ping found that this website doesn't work on smartphones, and uh, his children all use smartphones. None of them use Gopher anymore for some reason. So uh, she says, we, we, let's build a mobile friendly, a new uh, website API. And if the Ministry of Education doesn't have an open API, we make one for them. And so he, he ran a reclaim our language blog post. He said, the MOE dictionary is very old. It started uh, in 45 and it's still being uh, frequently updated. This is the most rich classical uh, and modern Chinese language. But because its website was built in 96, uh, nobody knew what a permanent link is back then. So when you copy the thing in your browser bar and send to somebody else and click, they cannot open it. And because they still use this, at that time, very advanced database technology called the DBase3, some of you may still remember that. Uh, it, it supports only Big Five, a, a, a local encoding. So it doesn't do Unicode. And so most of the rare glyphs ju just are like that bitmaps. And of course, there were no mobile devices, so they don't support mobile devices. And their best view was IE5 or Netscape 4.7 plus. That plus carries no meaning. There's no Netscape after 4.7. The, the, the point is, uh, it was a very, very old website, and it's very, very unusable. It pops out a 30 minutes uh, auto logout alert that redirects you to the front page or close the window, but there is no login. 
you, 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 I don't log into this website, and this website logs myself out after 30 minutes. And, and I asked them, actually, that was because they could not figure out how to work with the new technology called HTTP Keep Alive. They want to close the HTTP connections. Now they just have to change a HTTP header for that, but there's no maintenance anymore, so they just use this workaround. And then it becomes part of the spec. So every other dictionary website after that from the MOE has the same feature. So, all right, so it is ridiculous. So, uh, Ye Ping on the Hackpad, which is Gov uh, Zero's uh, collaborative document of choice. And then he listed just what kind of designers and caters and help he needs for making this project happen. So uh, within 24 hours, uh, we just downloaded all the HTML, converted everything to JSON and to SQL and so on, and figure out all the schema and, and so on. And for those 24 by 24 bitmaps, I set up a Google spreadsheet to ask people to enter their uh, Unicode code points next to the pictures. Down Google spreadsheet. This is. Uh, this will become a pattern. Whenever we use a new web service from Gov0, it, it just went immediately down. We are like the DDoS tester of new services. And then, uh, of course, I have to, to back this up with a EtherCalc, which is a collaborative spreadsheet that I maintain. I work with Denver to create this, which doesn't suffer from the same scalability problem as Google Spreadsheet. So after 24 hours, we identify like pronounce any of these, but those are rare characters. And then uh, we now have a Unicode. Uh, the only problem being, the Ministry of Education says, you know, this is copyright, everything, uh, all reserved, all rights reserved, you cannot do anything with it. Um, we, we say that we, we say that because we relinquish our, all our copyright under Creative Commons Zero, we release the code and the converted data to the public domain. So they have no ground to sue us because we are not, strictly speaking, derivative makers. We're just format converters. And so after the, their law people, for a year, the ministry agreed we are fair use. So uh, what we do, do we do with those data? First, we set up a website that assigns a very well-known uh, URL to each uh, word. For example, Ziliao data is just more the TW. Very easy to remember. You don't even have to remember it. So the thing is that when you hover over Ziliao raw material, it just pops up with the link data kind of way, the JSON uh, representation, so that you can Then people started sharing it on Facebook, the definitions. So like open data workshop. Now, there is no such entry in the dictionary, but instead of saying not found, we show the definitions of open and data and workshop below, and we also have a beautiful calligraphic representation uh, for the Facebook people who share it. Now, this is very important because having a picture on Facebook improves the virality by about 10 times. So, uh, but it is also very difficult to find a proper picture that goes with your main message. So how about just typing your main message and get a picture that is just a main message? So this becomes a favorite way of uh, like civic protesters or just normal marketing people to, to have an appropriate picture. And if you think the calligraphic style is not to your liking, you can just click it and switch to a more ancient script and so on. There's a lot of different scripts. So it becomes fun. And that's how we get 7 million visits a month. So after this, we can now call people to action because there's a regular inflow of people who use my dictionary to share it on Facebook. We can now call for people to donate their time to improve dictionary. So when, whenever we want to digitize a, a old paper dictionary like the Amis Francais, uh, we just call people to look at this and then type this and then you know it's magically digitized in uh, 53 hours. Our, we also work with the Ministry of Education to use uh, programs to, to locate like off by one uh, problems of their citations and then ask people to, to uh, respond which is correct. And then of the about 6,000 erratas, about 5,600 are from the Moedic Dictionary. So this is like crowdsourced corrections that eventually joins back the official uh, Ministry of Education corpus. So um, now we have AMIS. Um, a dic dictionary that is of origins. Uh, in this section, I want to end with my personal observation on the way we work. 
before the internet, uh, and still for some paper-based organizations. People work by coordinated consensus. That is to say, in a committee, everybody should understand what everybody's position is, and the people work and have a fine consensus that everybody can agree on and go from here. The problem with this is that it doesn't scale. The, the wetware, the brain, just isn't wired to work with a committee that's larger than 150 people, and maybe far less than that, depending on the communication infrastructure. So uh, the way we work in Gov0, and especially in the Moedict uh, project, is with collaboration. That is to say, everybody whatever they want, but they abandon, they relinquish copyright. They don't restrict other people cherry picking uh, good ideas. And then they make everything public, including the progress, the plan, the roadmap. And so it, it actually works. So this is what we call the collaboration model. Um, and it's interesting, uh, because I'm a dictionary geek, uh, before 1940, in the Oxford Dictionary, collaboration and cooperation used to be synonyms. They used to mean the same thing, just work together on something. But in, after the World War II, or during the World War II, collaboration takes a new meaning. That is to say, you work with an enemy, like uh, treacherous cooperation with an enemy, like the Vichy uh, government in the France uh, occupied by uh, Germany, or in the Asia there is, of course, the Wang Jingwei government, and so on. People who work with uh, perpetrators uh, become so-called collaborators. But when you abandon your copyright, when you want to work with uh, any people whatsoever, of course they include people who disagree with you. And so the way that we work on the Moedic Dictionary, which as you might, might remember, includes all sorts of different aborigine and uh, like minority population and teams that don't necessarily agree or even vicious uh, against each other. The way that keeps us still working together is just by rough consensus. We don't have to work, agree on everything. We just work on whatever we want, but open to uh, cherry picking of ideas and cross pollination of ideas. So this is the, the way that we've been working on in Gov0 as well. So as uh, I started saying that we fork the government, fork uh, has a very specific meaning in open source development. It means taking an open source project into a different direction, keeping everything, not saying, you know, rejecting everything. We keep everything, but we think maybe the development is not to our liking. So we take it to a different direction. We fork it. Now, after we fork it, we can always, at any given time, merge it back as long as the upstream, the, per the people we forked from, uh, agree with us. So every fork by itself carries a potential of merging back. So uh, as I explained, uh, Ye Ping registered this domain 3du.tw, which is of the education edu.tw domain uh, to work on the MOA dictionary. And eventually, this year, uh, the uh, education uh, ministry agreed to use the Creative Commons to open data every single dictionary that they have. And it took three years, but it was worth it. Or, for example, uh, before the data GOVTW, the open data platform in Taiwan government um, started taking hold with a lot of uh, data, the Gov0 people started their own uh, DKN, DKAN, and prototyped the kind of uh, taxonomies or folksonomies that we want to see from the open data. And now the CCAM people working with the data GOVTW takes our contributions back and populates all the different kind of data so that by this year, Taiwan is now um, the top ranked country on the global OKFN uh, global data survey. So, so my point is that not all forks are rejections. Many forks are like research. They're, they're, they may not work. Many of them doesn't work, but if some of them work, the government's free to merge them back and for the better uh, of the common good. So that's my 